I want to talk to you about the easiest way to get clients in your lawn care business. And this is going to sound a little counterintuitive, but the best way to do it is to spend a little bit of time each day tuning up your Facebook page. Now, you are probably thinking like Facebook is where I go to argue with my uncle. It's where I go to talk to other lawn care business owners about how much our customers are driving us crazy. But most lawn care businesses have a Facebook page and they manage it really poorly or, and this is the worst one, they don't update it at all. So what I want to talk to you about is the best way to easily and quickly generate content, have a fantastic looking Facebook page that has all of the right buttons pressed, that you'll, and you'll be able to watch new clients stream on in. And I will explain a little bit about why Facebook is so good for getting new clients in the door. But first, give this video a like. It really helps out the channel, helps other people find out about us. And if this is the kind of content you're looking for to figure out how to grow your lawn care business and find all of the cool marketing hacks you can use to make your business more successful, make sure to subscribe. All right, hey, let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create the right kind of page. And that means, you know, this might sound a little bit basic if you already have a page set up and you know this, you need to set up a business page, not a personal profile. I've seen many, many lawn care businesses that are some form of like first name, last name smushed to be like a personal profile. I think that that kind of dates back to the era when it was hard to, you couldn't have a page be in like local groups, which are a great way to get attention on yourself. But pages can be in groups now. What I would also suggest is just having your personal profile be in the groups and participate in that way. So you will need a personal profile that is your name and a picture of you as the, the profile picture. And then you need a business page that is managed by that personal profile. So you want to add in your business info, be accurate, and then add a profile picture and a cover image. For the profile picture, I either want you to use your logo if it's going to be readable. If your logo is like one big symbol, that's fantastic. If it is not a big symbol that is obvious, if there's more than two or three words, then what would be better is for you to do a picture of you as the business owner, no sunglasses, let's smile right into the camera, look right down the barrel of the camera and smile, and, and use that with you in like uniform that has your like company color. Your cover image, I want it to be an image of your best work or your team celebrating something. It, it should be a good picture and it should be visible. Don't settle for it looking like crap, right? Put in a little bit of effort here. You'll be able to use both of these things for quite a while. When you upload it, then go look at it on your phone. Make sure that it also looks good on your phone. Make sure that it looks good on your computer. And what what I mean by looks good is that, you know, what you want to be looking at in the photo is easy to see and that it's not like weirdly cropped off. Like we don't want half of people's heads cut off when it's on mobile versus desktop. Just look for it to be looking good and professional, not super pixelated. You know, if you need to go out and take a better photo with your iPhone, or maybe you have a friend that has a DSLR that could take, as uh, just a you know, fancy word for a, a camera, could take it with a digital camera for you. Make sure that both of these photos are really, really good quality. Facebook will smush them a little bit, but as long as you're putting in really, really good input when Facebook smushes it, it'll still look good. Okay, so we've we've added all of our business info. We've added a profile picture and a cover image. Then we're going to complete, when you create a new page, there's like 10 steps to completing out the page that Facebook walks you through. Let's go ahead and walk through all of those. And then you're going to set up user roles. So if you have someone in the office and you want them to be able to post, you'll need to be able to do that. I'll have, we have a whole blog post this week that goes along with this video that has a little bit more detailed instructions and some screenshots. So I will link that down below if you need uh, you know, a more specific walkthrough. I'm trying to give you the, the high level overview here so that you can go and get started. And if you need specific help with things, you know, obviously you can always Google and then we'll have some stuff in the blog post to help you out. So user roles is just who should be on the page and what they should be able to do. It's really, really good if you have a spouse or a friend that you really trust to have as a backup account on the Facebook page that has full access. So that when, you know, let, let's say your account got caught up in something, it got stolen, it posted something illegal, and then you get banned. You want there to be a way that when you create a new account, 
you're able to get back onto your page, reclaim ownership. So just make sure that you've got somebody else in there as uh, as a manager on the page. So you want to choose, there's a, a button on the page that that is like a default CTA when somebody hits your page. And so you want to think about what that should be. Now, if you're choosing, you're watching this video, you're choosing to become more active on Facebook, you can have that be message us, which is, I think, what Facebook would prefer, is that when someone hits your page, they have an option to stay on the Facebook platform and talk to you about doing business. That's Facebook's preference. It helps people see more ads, you know, all of that good stuff. So I would consider that if you are going to be faithful to respond to messages on Facebook, because Facebook is also going to say, how quickly you usually respond when someone clicks that button. So if they click it and they see three days, like, ooh, woof, they're not gonna, they're not gonna talk to you. You can also just do a contact us button that kicks them to a page on your website. That is a totally valid option. But if you are planning to be on Facebook more often because you're trying to grow the business using this organic strategy, I would really consider the message us option and just make sure that you keep that keep on top of that stat. What you can do to game it a little bit is have a few friends send messages like when you're out to dinner just say like hey i need you to do something for me real quick and have a few people at the table send messages to the page and immediately respond to each of them so that you have kind of a built-in average of a really really quick response and then just make sure to maintain that over time okay What I want you to do next is get two weeks of content ready and in the queue. We're going to use the Meta Business Suite Planner for this. And what you want to do is pull photos of work that you have done. This can include guys in the field working. A lot of people take doing projects and stuff will take photos as like notes to themselves. So if you've got some of those, maybe consider the the couple of those that are the best that you could use. You can do before and after as two photos. So just really think about opportunities to post photos are the main thing. If you are shooting some video, that's awesome. You probably already, you, you've maybe left this this video at this point if you're, you're already into shooting video and stuff for your Facebook page. What I would tell you about shooting video is that Facebook is really preferential right now to vertical format video, like a reel, or if you're on YouTube, YouTube Shorts. They're preferential to that. I don't know how much it's going to help you with a local audience because they're so discovery driven that they're just pushed out really wide, but you could do it. And then there's content there for people. Once they like the page, you know, you'll trickle into their, their reels feed. What you would, what you want to consider when you're doing that is not a lot of camera movement because that can be distracting, make it hard to see focus. You know, you can level up to some camera movement, focus on it first, just really simple shots, just camera on tripod down low mower comes past, you know, throw some text on it, you know, Monday morning, we're getting after it sort of things. So you can do that for reels for photo content before and afters are the king. Now you don't want to have everything on your page be a before and after, but if you show up to a yard and like, dang it, you know, they're biweekly, it rained, this yard looks gnarly and you're going to get out there and mow it. Dude, it's great to take before picture, Take a note of where you're standing when you take it, hold the camera right in front of your eyes so that you have a set height and then come back after you've mowed, stand in the same spot, hold the camera in the same spot. It's just going to look better visually if they're like super symmetrical. So before and afters are fantastic pictures of the crew. You know, if you guys are having lunch and having a good time. You're, if you're having a, like a group lunch, maybe you, you're taking the guys out to lunch, take a photo of that and post where you are and tag the local business because then that'll, that'll almost guarantee you a little bit of engagement. They'll probably like the photo. So just think about anything that's happening is, is probably worth a photo unless it's something bad <laughs> that happened. You know, you broke something. That's a more higher level strategy to lean into a mistake and, and post about it. But in general, I would post pictures of beautiful lawns, your, you know, guys doing hard work, all of that sort of thing. If you're planting, you know, before and afters on landscape projects are chef's kiss. They're so good. Immediately things look fantastic. And then, okay, so you've got two weeks of content in the Meta Business Suite planner. I'll have a link down below to where to find that. Once you have a little bit of an audience on your Facebook page, you're going to be able to 
have Facebook tell you like, hey, your people are online Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And so you can choose when you're posting on that. For now, I would kind of lean toward posting in the evening. That's just when most people are online. You know, you get home from work and you're scrolling while you watch TV or eat dinner. So then what you want to do, once you've got two weeks of content in the hopper, I would let like two days go by. So there's a couple of posts out there. And then what I want you to do is send this link to friends who are local, family who is local. Don't, I would try to avoid getting it too far out from people who live in your immediate area and let them know like, hey, I'm working on a new strategy here. I could really use your help when you see a post from us. Like first, will you like the page? Because maybe they haven't liked the page yet. And then say, hey, when you see something come across your feed from us, would you leave a comment, make sure that you like or love reaction on it. Getting that little bit of engagement traction is going to tell people or is going to tell Facebook people care a little bit about this page and we should show it to a few more people. And you're going to be able to just get the wheels turning a little bit off of that. The next thing you want to do is at the end of this two weeks, look at your data right? Facebook is going to show you the posts that people engaged with the most. And there's, I want to be really, really honest with you in your first two weeks, there's not going to be a lot, right? Your friends, your family are going to care. Um, and they're going to help you out when they see your posts, but in general, you're not going to get a ton of traction just in two weeks. But what you can do is look at what got of the things that got a little bit of traction, what got the most, and then lean on that a little bit more. I think you'll probably find that before and after pictures, especially of projects, are, are things that people are going to engage with a little more. It's a little more obvious, the, the wow that you're going for. But if a home is beautifully landscaped and you've done a fresh cut on it and it looks good, I mean, you might find that that does really, really well. So just look at the kinds of things that, that succeed and, and do more things like that. Look for commonality between the things that work. Okay, so you'll have two weeks of data to go on at this point. You're churning out content really quickly because you're thinking about taking photos when you're in the field. This is not a, you're beating your head against the desk at the end of the night, like, oh, I didn't take any pictures. Make it a part of your process that you're getting two or three pictures a day that you hope to be able to use. That's gonna help you build a catalog, right, that you can go back to. Because next year, there's no reason you can't post some spring photos from this year. You know, I guess you can't take spring photos this year right now. But summer photos this year are totally reusable next summer. You can cycle some of that stuff back in, keep the, the copy fresh on it. Hey, if you have made it all the way to this point in the video, I hope that you've gotten something out of this. You're taking some action here to grow your business. You're not just like being a sponge that soaks in information. I want you to get out there and do it. But if you want those numbers to start growing faster, if you want to grow and become number one in your area, I would really suggest that you work with Lightspeed Social Agency to do paid ads for your Facebook page. You can implement this organic stuff. We also do organic. So with all of us working together and the paid ad sides of this, we can really grow your business in the specific areas where you want to grow going after specific neighborhoods, specific subdivisions to make sure that your ads are in front of the right people as many times as possible to get you to those eight to 10 touches that close a sale. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and let me know if you're taking this on in the comments down below. If you're going to start posting, let me know. And uh, you can also email me a, a link to your Facebook page and I'll be your first like if, if you're going to get started. I would love to do that for you. All right. Hey, I will see you next week.